Independence Day at an abandoned factory location. And this building started out as the Apache Camper Factory, one of the innovators and first designers of the pop-up travel trailer. And a man named Mr. Vesley invented the pop-up trailer, or at least perfected it. And in 1960 or thereabouts, he built this huge factory just north of Lapeer to expand his business. We're in front of the building, looking at the old sign from when it was first opened that recently said Duracon, but you can see here from the early days said Vesley Corporation, and they had a matching water tower in the background, which is also still there. This is from 1961 when they built the new plant. We can see a progression of the different campers through the model years. In 1980, Mr. Vesley sold the company in the middle of their changeover to their final model, the deluxe hard-sided camper seen here in the picture and production ended soon afterwards. This is the old employee entrance to the building with the security gate and the card reader access. You can see some people have been in here though because there's some graffiti tagging and signs that there have been entry into the building. Here's the water tower that used to say Vesley Industries on it. You can see now it has the words Duracon. And Mr. Vesley sold the company around 1980. Soon after that, it went out of business. The property was purchased by Duracon, and they make molded bed liners for pickup trucks. So they changed the name on the water tower and started producing pickup bed liners and other truck parts here. But a few years ago, they also closed down, went out of business and moved the remaining operations to Wisconsin. I wonder what could be in these big pink boxes here. That's kind of weird. Let's get up close and have a look. Oh, the fire hydrants. I don't know why they keep the fire hydrants in boxes, but that's kind of interesting. I want to get right up front by the front of the building too, because I think they have one picture online at the front of the building, don't I? Yeah, and you explain more about the office building. All right, here's the front of the main office complex for the company. And this is really sad because it was such a nice, modern-looking building when it was first built. A lot of really fancy landscaping here out front. And they employed, I think, three or 400 people at their peak operations. And all those jobs are gone now. Good jobs that people used to have here in the community. Make sure you get the graffiti up here when we go on. Someone's been up on the roof doing graffiti. Part of the parking lot area here has been rented out to a electrical power line company called ITC. They're storing their wire spools here. And if we look over on the left side of the parking lot over here, we can see giant electrical poles and related equipment to wiring and electrical power transmission that this company is involved with. Now here's the abandoned security guardhouse. Looks like there's no one here, and it's got an actually not approved red tag thing on there from the zoning department saying they can't use that building. Um, but if you look off to the left or the right of that, you can see the racks of abandoned propane tanks that would have been used for the material handling, the forklifts and such inside the plant. It looks like they just walked away and left all that stuff behind. 